Around the 12th of October 1459, two weeks after his victory at the Battle of Bloor Heath, Daddy Dick, the Earl of Salisbury, arrives here in Ludlow to find York and Warwick waiting for him. Once again, the three Dicks are reunited. The Battle of Ludford Bridge, or otherwise known as the Non-Battle of Ludford Bridge, took place here in Ludlow. Now Ludlow is naturally fortified by the River Team and was the seat of York's power. If he wanted to stand up against the might of Queen Margaret and the King, he needed to gather as many troops as he possibly could. Salisbury had just won a very gallant victory, but they were still outnumbered as three Lancastrian armies closed in on the town. I think we've already established the Queen is the strongest piece on the board. Margaret? Yet again, she's got those Yorkist nobles on the run. First, they headed southeast to Worcester. The King, who is two steps behind his Queen, is now closing in. So, they head south to Tewkesbury. And when they get to Tewkesbury, they decide it is better to head northwest back to their stronghold, to Ludlow. Now at this point, you may be thinking these Yorkists don't appear to be of the same spirit that we saw in episode one at St Albans. But the truth is, once the Lancastrian armies had all joined up and both sides arrived back at Ludford Bridge, King Henry's force is one of the largest armies to take to the field during the Wars of the Roses. The Yorkists are heavily outnumbered and outmaneuvered. Richard Duke of York had not managed to raise nearly as many men as he had hoped. The Yorkists fortified their position outside of the town, guarding the bridge, facing their cannons towards the enemy. The king offered them all a pardon, except for those who were involved in the killing of Audley. This included poor old Salisbury, and they weren't just going to hang Daddy Dick out to dry. They also knew that they couldn't trust the king's word, because if they'd surrendered, he would have changed the meaning and had them all executed. As night fell, the Yorkists, they came up with a master plan and they ordered a bombardment of the Lancastrian camp. The cannons, they opened fire, but to little effect, for the accuracy of a medieval cannon in daylight was questionable, let alone under the cover of darkness. But despite all this, we have one here to show you. That's right, a replica medieval cannon, one that would have put the fear of God into the men that saw her, one that would have made the hills echo with the sound of thunder. This is a very dangerous weapon indeed. Well, we are on a budget. My health and safety executive tells me I am now safe and ready for action. Now in medieval times, the gunpowder needed to be the perfect mix. Today, we have such a mix with Coke and Mentos. Make ready. <coughs> Present. Stop, oh, stop, oh, God. Cut, cut, stop, start. Ah. Oh. In fact, it was at this point, the captain of the Calais garrison, one Andrew Trollope, who'd been frog marched all the way from the borders of France by Warwick, decided where his loyalty would actually lie. Taking the Yorkist plans of defence with him, he swapped sides and took the pardon offered by the king. With their best soldiers now on the side of the enemy, the three dicks really were in trouble. Come the morning, they would be attacked. Come the afternoon, they could all be dead. Check. They had to do something. So much for the master plan, there wasn't one. But while their men were focused on bombarding the enemy, the Yorkist lords, they slipped away and back to the comfort of the castle for the night. While they were there, they decided it was best to live to fight another day. So, under the cover of darkness, they snuck out and escaped. <laughs>
Richard, Duke of York, headed to Ireland with his second son, Edmund, while Salisbury, Warwick and York's eldest son, Edward, headed for Devon and back to Calais. Yes, yes and yes, living to fight another day is the right way to play. But it does make me chuckle because they didn't tell any of their men about their departure. So just imagine this, you're one of their soldiers, you've woken up right here that very morning, you are, well, you haven't slept, you're tired, you're dreading the battle to come, you're fearing for your life, and your leaders, who you look up to for guidance, support, and leadership, well, they've just disappeared off into the night. I would have done the exact same thing they did and got the hell out of here. The Yorkist troops, they packed their bags and they headed home. The Lancastrians had won their first battle of the Wars of the Roses without even spilling any blood. Almost. If we've learned anything about Margaret, I reckon she was infuriated at the fact that she let the Yorkist rebels slip through her fingers. After all, the Wars of the Roses, it's all about revenge. So she lets the Lancastrian army sack the town of Ludlow. Her and the king, they were leaving a message for the people. You do not support the wrong cause. The Yorkist cause. York had left in such a hurry that his wife Cecily and their two younger children, George and Richard, the Richard who would become King Richard III, were left standing alone in the marketplace where they were taken captive and put in the care of a loyal supporter of Queen Margaret. So, we decided to bring our medieval cannon here to this army training base to see how it would fare against a modern tank. This time we're not using Coca-Cola, but we're using my highly explosive medieval cannonball. And fire! 